peace and peace science teachers, which will be uh, presented by Dr. Zuth Kelly Dao, Department of Science and Mathematics Institute of Teacher Education Malaysia, and implementation of medical bioethics education with Ashwaza values at Faculty of Medicine by Mustika. Uh, she will be from, uh, she's from Forensic Pathology and Legal Medicine, Zamura Islamic Hospital University. So the first presenter here, Dr. Uh, Zul Kelly Dao, may I request you to present your paper, that is, Awareness of Bioethical Issues Among Pre-Service Science Teachers. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good afternoon uh, to everybody. Thanks to uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my our topics uh, is that is uh, awareness of bioethical issues among prison design teachers. Okay, we know that uh, bioethical issues is a uh, Ethical issues emerging from advanced investment of science and technology, and this one is a relation with uh, life sciences, biology, bioscience, biotechnology, biomedical, medicine and medical ethics, politics, law, theology, and philosophy. Uh, bioethical issues are uh, uh, actually uh, the science and technology also triggered new ethical issues. Uh, such as abortion, euthanasia, organ transplant, standard of death, stem cell, research genes, genes diagnosis, recombinant DNA, genes therapy, and reproductive <coughs> gene therapy and reproductive technology. So, new discoveries and innovation in science and technology have raised a number of bioethical issues. So that, that's why uh, teaching and learning bioethical issues in today's curriculum more important than ever. We also know that the literacy standard for science also fo not only focus on content on science, but also emphasize on bioethical issues. Uh, that's why uh, now the bioethical issues including its making good ethical decision are very important for peace science teachers. Okay, what is a pre service science teachers and the relation with the bioethical issues? So, pre service science teachers are trainee teachers. This is based on our country. Uh, pursuing their first degree in education program. And they are in the early stages developing upon science and establishing their identities and values. Uh, they also may show maturity in both physical and uh, mental form, but in reality, their values are still immature. Uh, teaching in this age will be much more effective than at any other time in their life. This is uh, mentioned by So Park, 2004, Mi Jo Jiang, uh, Yu Jiang Kim. Sorry for wrong pronunciation, maybe. Uh, 2015. Uh, we also know that bioethical issues is an excellent tool to generate interest and establish the relevance of science content, as well as your closely related to ethical issues such as aside, termination of pregnancy and organ donation. Uh, work on bioethical issues based on pre service scientists. Uh, when referred to the literature is very few. Uh, some example for researchers done work in bioethical issues such as uh, Umdo Torsaka, 
Fiza Zara, Atuk Mifasul Mifatul Buddha and Quran Karman 2019. Uh, in Malaysia, bioethical show also teach in subject bioethical education, especially in uh, tertiary education. But for secondary education, bioethic bioethical should teach at the secondary level. Uh, that's why this one called uh, absence of biotic in any subject. Now socialized knowledge of biotic, biotic knowledge among students become low. A student will not be able to identify and relate to their intrinsic belief and moral understanding and may undermine the full implementation of bioethics and proper uh, ethical thinking among students. Now we uh, like uh, one to the high ability of teachers in addressing current issue of bioethics is important because the quality of science teachers will affect the quality of science students and further impacts the quality of science and the credit as well as their future science work, work course. Those important to improve bioethics education when they are pre service teachers. This is uh, our objective uh, study. Uh, to determine the awareness of bioethical issues among pre design teachers at one of the educational institutions. And then this is a recent question. What is the pre design teacher's view on items related to awareness of bioethical issues? What is the pre design teacher's awareness level of bioethical issues? What is most important bioethical issues among pre design teachers? Is there any significant difference? In the views on items related to awareness and awareness level of bioethical according to gender, courses, and religious. And last one, what is uh, pre-service science teachers' suggestion to increase awareness of bioethical issues? So, I said methodology, uh, only 60, 67 respondents. Uh, President teachers at one of educational institutions were included. A survey based questionnaire with five point Likert scale and open ended question. Current uh, batch of work questioning 0 0.93. Uh, and we also use the uh, five scales of uh, Likert scale. All data were analyzed using SPSS uh, 22.0 package program. So, this is the uh, our results. Uh, this is the profile of the samples: gender, male and females, uh, dominant by female, 40, uh, 71 percent, and for religious, also do domi dominant by Muslim, 72 percent, around 70 percent, and for cost, uh, science major is uh, dominant for the cost. So this is the views on item related to awareness of bioethicals. Uh, so overall of this uh, perception, uh, previous and teachers uh, show agree their awareness on the bioethical issues. And then, then we use the t-test to that's the overall of the bioethical issues among uh, research design teachers that we found only gender not uh, significant but for religious and cost uh, significant and we also found that for Muslims uh, higher than the uh, non-Muslim and also for cost major higher than for uh, science selective Uh, then this one is for bioethical issues, only for the bioethical issues. Uh, we found that cloning is the highest than others. Uh, overall mean awareness, 4.0218, still uh, strongly agree that they are about the bioethical issues. So all research science teachers strongly agree they are awareness about bioethical issues. And then we also do the t-test, same as uh, before, the gender not uh, show the significant difference. Religious and cause show the significant difference. 
uh, these are the ranking of most important bioethical issues. Uh, we found that uh, please researchers uh, uh, mentioned that abortion is the uh, most important bioethical issues than the others. And this one is the main respondent suggestion to increase awareness of bioethical issues among pre-submission teachers. Uh, first, introduce bioethics course. And then the second one is teaching in class. And the third one is include in curriculum. This is the main importance of uh, suggestion by the pre-submission teachers. So the conclusion and implication. For the conclusion, the result found that the priest recent teachers had a positive opinion about science and technology and accepted its importance in their daily, daily life. The term of bioethics was, uh, was well known to most of them. And the most important bioethics issues were abortion and lastly, last uh, is a transgender. So overall, the findings showed that priest recent teachers were aware of the existence of bioethical issues. However, the authorities may implement bioethical issues more firmly to pre-service scientists in the future or raise the awareness level, especially based on respondent, religious, and process. So this is the next time for the future, maybe we uh, look to more research on this uh, awareness about the bioethical issues. So I think that's all. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for your nice presentation. Uh, now, our next presentation will be on implementation of medical bioethics education with Aswada Values at Faculty of Medicine, which will be presented by Dr. Mustika. And she is from University of Nanahaku, Ulama, Surabaya, Indonesia.
So in this study, aim to determine correlation and implementation when you may take certification with as many values in preclinical students. The methods we conducted a survey by questionnaire to 200 medical students, and after we got informed consent from the student, only 190 students is become respondent. The result this is a gender distribution. Our respondent and the student distribution. Divided to four, uh, four part. And then students' information resources they got from textbook, lecture, skills, and role model. The most part, the students' information resources they got from textbook and lecture. From the questionnaire, we got students' level of knowledge. The student have a good level of knowledge as 87.5%. And is Aswaja values a uh, level of knowledge about Aswaja values correlated with professional behavior? From the data, we analyze that between level of knowledge and professional behavior is significant correlation, have significant correlation. In globalization era, uh, healthcare system more complex. That's why we need um, more uh, learn about bioethics and one of the point from the bioethics we can learn from cultural, socio-economics, religion, values. In this research, we we explore about Aswaja values. In Aswaja values, we learn about how be a doctor with a Tawasut values or moderate, being moderate, and Tawasut being balanced in work and life, then Tasamu being tolerance with another idea or another perception. It, it is very correlated with uh, professional behavior values that we have. Uh, doctor must be have integrity, compassion, empathy, and honesty. So, as for the values, being moderate, teach student to be empathy and in balance values, the student have how to integrity with work and life balance. The background of medical students in Urusa mostly come from Muslim boarding school or in this uh, Indonesia language it calls Pasantra. And the medical student in Urusa is dedicated to be doctor in Muslim boarding school society. So we create and empowering the Muslim boarding school society to have healthcare facilities, their own healthcare facilities. We call it push strength. This is uh, Medical student activity with Muslim body school student. They give they give some workshop 
for them about healthcare, uh, primary healthcare, how to uh, how to make uh, how to cure uh, injuries for traffic accidents. Then this is social activity for the Muslim Boarding School Society. They give uh, healthcare access to them to get the medication and the healthcare examination. And this is a group discussion in the college. They talk about Islamic values in medicine, so they discuss about religion values is integrated with bioethics, medical values. The conclusion from my research is Aswadio values implemented as cultural competence, which is integrated in medical bioethics education. Aswadio values have significant correlation with professional behavior. To be a doctor become Rahmatan Lil Alami or bringing peace to the universe. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, thank you, Omustika, for your nice presentation. Uh, here, audience, uh, we have another presentation uh, for uh, this session, and that is Academy, if you can, uh, challenges of controlling plagiarism in uh, higher education of Bangladesh, which will be presented by Mohammad Shahir Hall, PhD Professor of English and Executive Director, Center for Research and Training, East West University, Bangladesh. on basically as you can see from the title plagiarism particularly in higher education um, let me give you some background the thing is I'm actually doing another project and this one is a byproduct of that I'm looking at plagiarism policies in Bangladesh University public and private um, so I when I was connecting data I also got some data relating to problems of uh, not only detecting plagiarism but also dealing with people who are caught uh, plagiarizing. So this is uh, a research based on that. So plagiarism, I think most of you know the term, but I want to just differentiate between other forms of cheating. If you think of classroom cheating, which we are very familiar with in this part of the continent, the subcontinent, that means whenever you have any exam, whether it's SSC, HSC, or the higher education exam, in the classroom when you're cheating, and you're caught, that is called basically classroom cheating. Then contract cheating is something that maybe we're not familiar with, but that has been there for a long time. Um, maybe when you are required to submit an assignment, a term paper, or sometimes even write an entire thesis, other people write it for you in exchange for money. And there are lots of services right there, online services as well, uh, that are available. So that is contract uh, cheating, but we're, I'm going to focus on plagiarism, which many people in our country, whether it's uh, definitely not in primary education and sometimes even in higher education are not familiar with and what kind of harm it can actually do. I mean, if you get caught in the classroom, it's actually not a big deal. You have acted unethically, but you have not caused any other people harm. 
But if you plagiarize, suppose you come up with, you spend your entire life developing a theory or an idea, and somebody else steals that and does not mention your name. That means your entire life's work has been done. So that is even more detrimental to our society. And we don't, frankly, have much policies uh, for this. Um, these are a few famous people, uh, some of you might be familiar with some of them, who have been accused of plagiarism in the West and in the East as well. Now, definitely a lot of things have, uh, commotion has not been caused because at that time we didn't have the software, we didn't have the technology, we, we didn't talk about referencing in-text citations, but if you just type the name and plagiarism in Google, you'll see that some of them have been accused of these things. Um, uh, some of them have heard stories from elsewhere and they, they have the literary mind, they wrote it down. But maybe the stories were somewhere else. Um, so you also have plagiarism, it's not just with academia. Plagiarism is everywhere. Commercial writing. Things taken from the West, sometimes West takes from the East. Whenever you take a piece of writing, you have to get permission. Without permission, you watch films, Hollywood films taken by Bollywood, taken by Hollywood. That's plagiarism. If you have not taken permission, that's plagiarism. Songs from the West to the East, or maybe from the East to the West as well. Even if you look at horror films, I mean, the horror films that come out in Japan, The Ring, The Grudge, these have been taken uh, by Hollywood as well. So obviously they probably took permission, but without permission, it's plagiarism. It's someone else's ideas, and you are making money out of that. So if you think of Kiyama uh, Sekiyama, from the we also have the Banda version, was permission taken? If permission was taken, no problem. But if permission was not taken, then it's plagiarism. You took that idea, you are making money. So that is available everywhere. Music is constantly happening. Art as well, film and television, something that's been successful in the West or another country or sometimes something that has been successful in the East, other people take them. So that is also plagiarism as well. So plagiarism is everywhere, but I am dealing with academic plagiarism. And this is very important because if you don't deal with it, then you are definitely not going to be able to sustain the standard of higher education in Bangladesh. That is very important. Okay, um, I mean, if you see the rankings, rankings are basically a kind of show, a sham, in order to market it, higher education, because higher education globally is a $700 billion industry. $700 billion industry. So we can make money from higher education. And that's why ranking is there. But one of the ways you rank is, you know, by standardizing your higher education. Uh, so I'm going to focus on a couple of things. Uh, one general objective is to look at the challenges of uh, dealing with plagiarism. And the other one is, once a plagiarist is caught, how to deal with that? Because at times, those plagiarists get away with it. So how, how is it difficult or, or the ways of dealing with them as well? So I want to look at that. Because sometimes, I mean, the newspapers you hear of this constantly. But then, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Okay, so uh, I actually went to quite a lot of universities, more than 40, but for this one, I'm, uh, this is an ongoing research, so I'm actually focusing on 20 universities that have gone to public and private in five divisional zones. Uh, um, and then these are basically general universities, not uh, medical universities or technical universities, like engineering universities. So these are general universities that I, I went to. And I basically uh, interviewed the administrators and teachers, not students for this. And from them I got and collected the data. And I'm using uh, a, a theory called, uh, well, a methodology called critical discourse analysis. In fact, my PhD was in this field. It's, you know, looking at discourse, discourse meaning the policies, then also the rules and regulations in this case and then focusing on issues that are not apparent in the society. Plagiarism itself can be looked at like that. Many people are not aware of it and it's detrimental, but we need to actually deal with it, particularly in the uh, globalized world. Because if you want ranking, if you want to be recognized, if you want your universities 
uh, to, uh, if we want to increase the standard of our universities, then obviously we have to deal with this. And we tend to deal with only students who plagiarize. What about teachers who plagiarize? That's more important because teachers are the ones who are publishing. Because when students submit their uh, assignments, you check it, you give the grade, and you throw it in the bin. That's it. But when you, when academics publish, it's documented. When dissertations are done, it's documented. It's in the library and it's there online as well. So in that case, if you find that there's plagiarism, uh, uh, plagiarism in the dissertation, first of all, it's a big slap to the supervisor. What did the supervisor do? Suck his thumb and do nothing. Later on, so that will also not only tarnish the image of the supervisor, but also tarnish the image of the department, the university, and also to the country. And there's been lots of scandals on plagiarism around the world. So these are some of the findings. I've kind of generalized them. One is lack of specific plagiarism policy. We've got policies regarding cheating and other things, academic dishonesty, but nothing specific about plagiarism. So far, I mean, uh, as I mentioned, it's ongoing. I've only found one university, and that is a private university, not a public one, where there's a specific policy on plagiarism for the students as well as for the teachers. So initially, they start off with what is plagiarism, how not to do it, and then there are consequences for the students, and there are consequences for the teachers. So in other universities, I haven't found anything regarding the consequence of teachers using the word plagiarism. Um, then also a lack of initiative to recognize that plagiarism is something that is detrimental. So that awareness is not there. Um, if you go to lots of developed countries, you'll see that on their websites of universities, they make you aware what is plagiarism, what how you can avoid it, what not to do, what to, uh, what to do, as well as do's and don'ts, basically. Furthermore, sometimes there are also consequences of if you plagiarize, what uh, can be done. Um, then also, uh, this one is the thing that I want to focus on. This plagiarists take advantage of their connection. So when plagiarists in our country, they are caught Sometimes, and some of the administrators have told me with frustration that they are powerless, they can't do anything because these plagiarists have connections. And when they have connections, what happens is they've submitted their papers, their research for promotion, and plagiarism is found. Because of their connections, sometimes connections with administrations, sometimes connections based on political affiliation. Nothing can be done and they get their promotion. Even if news of it comes in the newspapers, I'll show you a few later on, nothing is done. Then what's the use? So that's one of the big, big problems, and these administrators have told you with a lot of frustration that they can't do anything. Um, then it undermines the sustainable development of higher education in Bangladesh. Uh, that's another thing. Then initiatives on plagiarism needs to be institutionalized. So as well as, you know, uh, the government can also do something about it. So in, since we, UGC, kind of monitors the universities, public and private in Bangladesh, UGC can, until the institutions come up with their own policy, UGC can easily come up with a policy that this is what the general rule of plagiarism is. And if you are caught plagiarizing, that is students and teachers, these will be the consequences. And for the time being, all the universities, public and private, can follow that. And then more specific uh, uh, plagiarism policies can come up from the universities themselves. So initially, that can easily be done. Um, if you want to avoid intellectual, play, intellectual theft, in general, in schools and colleges or maybe universities, these simple things can be done. I mean, how to summarize, how to paraphrase. There's difference between summarizing and paraphrasing, so I'm not going to elaborate because I don't have much time. Quoting, when you quote, when to quote, when not to quote, and also becoming familiar with the different referencing system. 
because you just give a reference, that's not good enough. In academic writing, you have to follow different referencing system, whether you uh, go for publication, whether it's journal or books, and you have to follow those referencing systems, and there are different uh, referencing systems. So that is something that can easily be taught, not only in research methodology, any type of academic writing, whether it's for engineers, whether it's for social science, there's no problem, you can, this can be taught. But a lot of our teachers are themselves are not aware of this. Uh, East West University, we have a center called East West University Center for Research and Training. So we provide, you know, uh, funds. These are some of the activities that we provide fund, as well as even though we're a private university, we provide a lot of fund. Um, and we also uh, have uh, different activities. All the publications come out through our uh, entity. So here, we have also developed this as well. So we've got a research ethics and plagiarism uh, policy and procedure. Uh, and we have also formed a committee as well. In fact, uh, we also invite uh, experts from outside. So at the moment, Dr. Uttam uh, Kumar also comes to us whenever we have a meeting. So we are not biased that, okay, we will only uh, promote our faculties without anyone uh, from outside. So whenever they submit their proposal, they have to go through this committee. And then based on our recommendation, they have to adapt and then we release the fund. Um, this is something that we want to avoid. Like these things have come out in our newspapers. Okay, so people from the oldest university in our country, people from other universities, and you've got vice chancellors here, you've got media people here. But these are reported, there's no follow-up. Nothing has happened to them. Nothing. So in that case, you know, how are you going to increase uh, ethics in higher education? So if we actually try to practice good ethics and then uh, also maybe be honest to ourselves, then maybe these things can be avoided. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, may I request all the presenters to be present on the dais, please, uh, for the uh, last two sessions. Dr. Mustika and uh, Mr. Zulkeri, please, uh, please come on the stage. We will be happy. Now, I uh, request our uh, chair persons for the rest of the part, that for their comments and for the question and answer session. Thank you, sir. Three presentations on the event we have we, we heard. Uh, first, awareness of biotechnical issues among research, three service sense research. The second one, uh, implementation of medical bioethics education with Ajakua uh, values at uh, Faculty of Medicine Universities, Nath Dula Kumar Surabia. And third one, very interesting, challenging of controlling plagiarism in higher education in Bangladesh. Actually, theory study at uh, which are based on the primary data based actual research. It's a, it's a, uh, very interesting. Uh, their uh, uh, research methodology is, is, is very clear. clear, uh, And uh, also uh, the findings of the uh, objectives based is very fine. Uh, so now uh, the forward is open uh, for questioning. Thank you. Please give a microphone to the person asking the question. Thank you all three presenters uh, for your nice presentation. I have a question to Dr. Uh, uh, Sharia. But uh, he shown the what is plagiarism and uh, what is going on uh, 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 in Bangladesh. And uh, I want to learn from uh, him that uh, 
uh, if a student take uh, 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 any uh, any sentences from his or her research or other paper that is this self plagiarism. Uh, do you work on that? It is very common in Bangladesh and all over the world. Self plagiarism because we do our research. Same research is uh, we published many articles from the same research. Okay, I want to. Yeah. Shall I answer? Yeah. Okay, you can please go ahead and answer. Self is something a lot of academics also do not know because they feel that I have published a paper. Everything is mine. I can use it as many times as I want. No, you cannot. Once it's published, it's copyrighted, it's no longer yours. You can use it definitely, but every time you have to refer to yourself. So my name is Mohamed Sharia Haq. Suppose I publish something in 2018, and if I want to use it now, I have to refer to myself as Haq 2018. I can use it as that, but not as new information. So that becomes part of the literature review. In fact, a couple of years ago, uh, uh, at East West, there was, a, there was a professor from a public university who wanted to uh, join full time, wanted to leave that uh, university and join us at full time. So our vice chancellor was so happy that she has a PhD from England uh, and then she's going to join our university from a public university to a private university. And then, you know, we also had doubts, so we called the university, we found that she was under investigation, and then we also checked her. Uh, papers as well, so she had several papers and basically she self-plagiarized. So even if you do a research yourself, once it's published, it's copyrighted. So you can refer yourself, again in the literature review, but you cannot present that same information as new information. So that is something that's very important. Thank you. It's, uh, it's, it's also called double publication. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's common. And, uh, if they refer to the paper and say this is uh, progress on the previous paper, yeah, but sometimes it, people right. publish the same material in a number of different journals and yeah, definitely. try to definitely. make a larger CV yeah. with the same material. No, you cannot. In fact, I, I actually submitted something in uh, Malaysia once and then after one year re rehashing that, they didn't communicate with me at all. Then I emailed them that I'm retracting this, and then I submitted to uh, American Journal, and then it was published. And then later on, I saw that they also published it as well in Malaysia. So now I have a paper that's been published twice. So in my, so I have to have the proof that I have retracted that. Furthermore, in my CV, I don't use the Malaysian one. I only use one. So sometimes that can happen as well, and you can be accused, but you have to have the proof that okay. Uh, you actually retracted the previous one. Yeah, you see journals like this, this kind of uh, researchers, but the problem is now we have a lot of predatory journals Definitely. that <laughs> like take money and publish anything they don't care about that thing. Yeah. So a that's another topic. I mean, we didn't yeah. have time. So predatory journal where you pay, there's some good one, open access journal where you also have to pay. But predatory journal, basically, they take your paper, they don't go through the editorial process and it's published there. They might take $300 from you, $400, it takes them $50 to publish and rest is their profit. So yeah, actually, we had a lot of students uh, sending their papers to <laughs> such a bank Not only students, even teachers, they want promotion, they have to apply next month with publication and they yeah. send it to predatory journals. Yeah, it's a very big issue. Yeah, I have a question. Yes, yes, yeah. I have a question, President. That is, if you are implementing uh, anti plagiarism software right now in our university, so we can check our papers before submitting to the different journals. You are not doing so? Yeah, definitely. I would like to talk about that. Turn it in. Turn it in is very expensive. Like we've got few accounts. It's costing us eight and a half thousand dollars per year. And Turnitin cannot check everything. Okay, so if something is there on the internet, it can detect. If it's not there, it cannot detect. Number one. Number two is 
Suppose you have similarity index of 80%. That doesn't mean to say 80% have been plagiarized. Sometimes Turnitin checks all the things that you also acknowledge as well. So you have to go through it line by line and then check. Uh, the basic thing is you don't need to turn it in. You yourself can detect any information that has facts and figures that has not been acknowledged. You can ask your student, where did you get it from? You cannot just get it from anywhere. So definitely the student or the teacher has got the facts and figures from somewhere. So as soon as you have that, where is the acknowledgement? You don't have the reference, it's plagiarism. You don't need turn it in. But Turnitin is being used nowadays, but it's very expensive. A lot of public universities cannot afford that. A lot of private universities cannot afford that. But obviously, you can, but you have to also understand the process of plagiarism. Without that, even if you use Turnitin, you can get away with it. I think there is another uh, uh, cheap software to use that. But definitely, you can use different softwares, no problem. But softwares cannot detect everything. They cannot detect everything. Okay, so we're using them definitely. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, uh, firstly, for Mustika. Thank you for your talk on Ashwagandha values. It's a, so Ashwagandha values in your abstract. You say this is a moderation, diversity, and balance. And so, yet if we're teaching students in the scientific method, we're meant to teach them to criticize and to attack the statements of different papers and different people to find the truth. So is there a conflict in the type of education for critical dialogue that we teach for scientific investigation and the ethical values of moderation and uh, tolerance. Because can I tolerate that I think your data is wrong? Or can I tolerate that you plagiarize the paper, yet the, can I tolerate? So what's the diversity? And a question for uh, so David, David. Uh, in your teaching, your investigation in Malaysia of the teachers. So, one of the goals of bioethics education for teachers is a respect for life, increase the respect for life for young people. And another is ethical issues of science and technology. And your conclusion is that the teachers in Malaysia were thinking particularly about looking at uh, science and technology uh, assessment. And this is similar, in fact, to the uh, results of the surveys I did uh, many years ago in Singapore, New Zealand, and Australia, which thought that bioethics education was about the ethical issues of science and technology, as opposed to the teachers in India and Japan, who thought bioethics is firstly about teaching respect for life. So in the Malaysian context, did you look at if the teachers also thought that Firefix is teaching about respect for life or is mainly focused on science and technology? Thank you. Thank you for sharing for the question. Uh, about the diversity in medical sciences, uh, we Actually, in learning method, we use uh, devil's advocate like that. Uh, so the uh, the student uh, make a group to uh, debate about some issues, ethical issues, example for adversity of euthanasia. So the basic uh, the 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 method, uh, the aim for the values about diversity is how we react, react about the differences if we need another idea or the statement that we disagree with the person. So are we will standing for our idea, our statement harshly or politely like that and we uh, assessment about the critical thinking or logically 
they're logically thinking about their statement. So I think this still can learn about diversity in the medical sciences. If there is a fact statement, uh, they can agree or disagree, but with the critical thinking and logically thinking the with the point. I think that is for diversity. And about tolerance, tolerance, moderate. Well, I can tolerance when it's not true. Well, yeah, it's same, same um, basic purpose uh, both. So we teach the student to clear their logical thinking first, how they react to the patient or maybe for the community, like our student in um, boarding school community where they have a lack of uh, economy, lack of uh, education, and that they just know information from social media, from internet. This doesn't know it is true, it is false, like that. They just, oh, you're wrong. Oh, I'm just, only me is right. Oh, you just wrong. This not we want to our student have, so, but we want to our student to create a thinking piece uh, into the universe that's why we want to integrate the Asphalt values uh, to be tolerant, to uh, accept diversity from another person or another idea with politely not possible. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You uh, brought your question. Uh, actually, in Malaysia, we have a to institution to produce uh, science uh, teachers. First is uh, under the university, and second one is under uh, institution, education institution. This is actually for education institution for uh, primary school, the second one is for uh, secondary school and above. <coughs> but uh, maybe uh, because of a different institution, maybe the perception of the science and economy difference, but we still try to uh, hope that our teachers uh, uh, very interested in uh, science and technology and try to uh, make uh, educate our students to interest in science and technology. I hope that this is a answer your question. Okay, thank you. Uh, there are lots of hands raised, and, but we are running out of time. We are having a, a, a total time constraint. But uh, uh, so uh, I think uh, last two questions, uh, one from this side, one from this side, right? Now, uh, here is someone. Uh, so. Thank you very much, presenter. My name is Wilson John Simon from Tanzania. I have one question for the presenter who presented about plagiarism. Is plagiarism a copying word by word, or plagiarism is a copying of ideas? Why am I asking, why am I asking this? For instance, you can read a certain paper, and then, within that paper you read, by using own reason, you can find counterposition about that. Maybe if it's an article, you can find counterposition about that article. But then, if you go, for instance, the, there is somebody who has presented a certain paper about bio, biocentrism. Biocentrism. Uh, biocentrism. Then within that paper, he presented he presented something about um, mono, monocentric. So if you read that paper, you can find that idea. Uh, the, those ideas, by, by using reason, you can see from that, uh, from, from, the, from, the, from the argument, you can, you can see that monocentrism by, 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 by reading, without even referring to other papers. But, but then at the same time, if you, you use that, can, if somebody writes that, can we accuse him for plagiarism? Uh, plagiarism is both word for word and idea. The thing is, uh, when you paraphrase, paraphrase means you read something, you change 100% of the word order. Some people feel that I've changed 
all over. So why do I have to refer to that? Idea, you took that idea. Idea is similar to someone else. And definitely word for word. So when you actually check to turn it in, you have to be careful because sometimes it even detects three words together. If three words are caught together, then that's also reported as a similar index. But when you read line by line, you overlook these things. So editors would need to overlook these things. But definitely word for word. Sometimes if it's word for word, you need to quote. But there are a lot of people who say according to, and they, they don't quote, but they actually take word for word. So it's word for word as well as idea. The thing is, if it matches, that means maybe the researcher has not done enough literature review. So you, it's very important for you to thoroughly read on your topic. If you don't thoroughly read on your topic, and you talk about something that already exists, then that can be considered as plagiarism. So that's why research is very important, literature review is very important for them. And sometimes in our, uh, you know, uh, you can say part of the world, sometimes we don't have access to a lot of journals. If you don't have, have access to journals, then you have to get access to those journals. So that's important as well. Now through various consortiums, online journals, we do get access to those journals. So literature review is very important. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, One important thing I should tell you, like, Citation actually strengthens your paper. Without citation, your paper is weaker. This is something a lot of authors don't pay attention to. When you have a lot of references in the, your, under your reference list, it shows you have done your homework. It's a good paper. And if you have only few references claiming this is your, a lot of what you have written may not get a, lot, a good evaluation, you know? He has written all this, what is the evidence? So when you do citation, that's evidence that what I'm saying has been published before, so this is evidence for what I'm saying. It's actually a positive thing. So, I, it's, I, you know, people simply don't understand the value of citation. So sorry I added something, so please. Uh, the next question. So thank you, sir. Uh, for the last question, uh, uh, for the last question of today's session, uh, I would request my madam. Yeah, she has been asking for quite a long time. Thank you so much. Actually, we, we were discussing such a topic that everybody wants to talk about at the same reason. And it's not only you, we are facing also this topic every day. I'm Dr. Pariha Hasin. I'm working as a self professor in the Department of Public Health and Economics of Aumamudu Sheikh Mujib Medical University. So uh, you uh, know already that I'm working in medical university. So we also have to go through a lot of cases and a lot of dissertation. So what I wanted to point it out that uh, I'm not uh, talking about how we can punish those people that those who are doing the plagiarism. But as an academic person, I really feel that this is a serious issue. We have, we have the whole responsibility, the academic people. Because why I raise this point, I feel that we have to work on the writing style. We have to teach our students the writing style. And the second thing is that we have to give all the information to our students so how they can avoid plagiarism. That uh, it's uh, not the only solution whether I have the target software or not, whether I'm rusty gated, whether um, I have been a bad name of doing this. We have to find out very deeply why plagiarism is happening. I think, Professor, thank you so much for this presentation. You already know that why plagiarism is being done. This question is very crucial for us because if you ask me, English is not my mother language. I will never do any plagiarism if I write anything in Bangla. But if I use any kind of foreign language, and if I don't have that much proper training and information, then there will be probability of increasing the plagiarism. So I think it's the right point to discuss. It should not be end here. Maybe at the end of the conference or in other session, we should continue this discussion. And we have a lot of good examples that how we avoid this plagiarism. Because it, uh, the students are giving lots of their time, teachers are giving lot of the time. At the end of the day, if it is identified as a plagiarized article, I think that will not be a good example for all of us. So thank you so much. And I really would like to know more positive examples that how universities and schools avoided the plagiarism. So thank you so much.
can I can just add something. I mean, in some English medium schools, they've already started. So maybe in Bangla medium schools, we can also start. But before we do that, I guess the teachers themselves need to be aware. So it's important for us. In Bangladesh, except for researchers, other people don't bother with plagiarism. So at the school level, if we can start, because whenever we give an essay, there are lots of people who go to the internet and copy and paste. So we can start there. OK, you've taken, no problem. Mention where you got it from. So later on, we can focus on in-text citation reference and different styles. But initially, just make them aware that if you have taken them and if you want to support a good idea, you need other people's ideas. Tell me where you got it from. Refer to that. And then support your idea. So if that could be started in our Bangla medium schools, then I think by the time they get to the university, they'll be aware. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you, dear presenter, and uh, thank you for uh, the audience for the participation. Now I would like to uh, uh, request our chairs to conclude the session. Sir, please. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, it was a very good session and uh, many good questions. And uh, I hope we have uh, more discussion of the uh, you know, issues with the presenters during the breaks. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, let's conclude this session. Thank you, sir. Now, I request uh, volunteers to present their mementos to our honorable chairs.